a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Northern Illinois University Shooting The Northern Illinois University shooting was a school shooting that took place on February 14, 2008, at Northern Illinois University in DeGalb, Illinois. Stephen Kazmierczyk opened fire with a shotgun and three pistols in a crowd of students on campus, killing five students, and injuring 17 more people, before fatally shooting himself. The shooting happened at the campus Cole Hall at approximately 3.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. The school placed the campus on lockdown. Students and teachers were advised to head to a secure location, take cover, and avoid the scene and all buildings in the vicinity of the area. After the shooting, the university administration cancelled classes for the rest of the week as well as the following week. Shooting At approximately 3.05 p.m. CST, Stephen Kazmierczyk entered a large auditorium-style lecture hall in Cole Hall, where an oceanography class was in session with approximately 120 students present. Kazmierczyk was wearing dark brown boots with laces, jeans, a black t-shirt with the word, terrorist imposed over an image of an assault rifle, a coat, a black knit hat, and a black utility belt with two magazine holsters, a holster for a handgun, three handguns, eight loaded magazines, and a knife. He also carried in a 12-gauge Remington Sportsman 48 shotgun concealed in a guitar case. He opened the auditorium door with such extreme force that many witnesses described him as kicking the door in, entering at the extreme southwest corner near the stage in front of the classroom, and began firing at the students. He next shot at the instructor, who was standing on the east side of the stage. The instructor tried to run out the exit at the southeast corner, but that door was locked. The instructor then ran out through the main exit at the east end of the classroom, through which the students were trying to leave. Some students who were not able to immediately escape hid under or in between the seats. When Kazmierczyk paused to reload after firing three rounds, some students shouted, he's reloading, and began to escape. Others continued to hide or were too shocked to react. After shooting all six shotgun rounds, Kazmierczyk fired on the room's remaining occupants with the 9mm Glock pistol, firing a total of approximately 50 rounds. He was reported to have walked up and down the West Island directly in front of or on the stage, firing at people as he went. He shot and killed himself before police reached the room. The police recovered 55 unexpended rounds of ammunition from the scene, including two fully loaded magazines containing rounds for a .380 semi-automatic pistol. A total of 23 people were shot, six of whom died. One witness reported that the gunman shot at least 30 rounds. Police later collected 48 shell casings and six shotgun shells. At the time of the shootings, Kazmierczyk was a graduate student in the School of Social Work at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. He was a former Nui sociology graduate student. Ganui police chief Donald Grady described him as an outstanding student, who reportedly had stopped taking psychiatric medication recently and become somewhat erratic. Emergency response the first 911 call of an active shooter was reported at 3.06 p.m. Seven seconds later, Ganui police officers were notified by the dispatcher. At 3.06 and 33 seconds p.m. Nui police officers Ajala and Zimbruff responded and told dispatchers that they were in the area. Driving northbound on Normal Road near Savant Person Hall, they encountered students running east from the Martin Luther King Commons area. One student shouted, he's shooting over there pointing west towards the MLK Commons area. Officer Hodder was also driving in the area and encountered the same frenzy. The officers proceeded in their vehicles, then on foot, joining Chief Grady, Lieutenant Mitchell, and Lieutenant Hennert, who had reached the west side of the Commons area after coming directly from the police station. Also racing to Cole Hall, from the police station was Sergeant Ellington and Officer Wright. Sergeant Holland was on patrol just south of the area along Lincoln Highway when he heard the call come in and approached the area. In the MLK Commons, Chief Grady advised the officers to immediately begin attending to victims and identify witnesses and direct them to a room in Home Student Center, where they could be interviewed. Some of the officers began attending to injured students who were running from the scene. 
while Hennert established perimeters around Coal Hall. Mitchell and Grady entered the building, where they met with Holland, Ellington, and Wright. Ellington, the first officer to arrive on the scene, evacuated the adjacent auditorium, and met with the other officers in the front walkway. Holland was instructed to remain in the hallway, to ensure no one came into the auditorium and that the shooter did not come out. Grady, Mitchell, Ellington, and Wright entered the South Auditorium, discovering a body on the stage, surrounded by guns, with a pool of blood coming from the head. Victims, with varying injuries lay on the floor or were propped up against the seats. Confirming there were no immediate threats, Grady and Mitchell began attending to victims, while Ellington and Wright confirmed that the shooter was dead. At 3.11 and 42 seconds, Ellington reported, to the dispatcher, shooters down. Shotgun secure. We need an ambulance and the coroner at Coal Hall. At the same time that officers arrived, at Coal Hall, Sergeant Rodman, who had left a meeting at the Home Student Center, arrived at the west entrance of that building, to find a shooting victim who had been shot in the back and the head, along with another victim who had blood on the face, seeking help, for his injured friend. Rodman attended to the most severely wounded victim. By 3.11 p.m. a DeKalb Fire Department ambulance was the first to arrive on the scene and was staged in a nearby parking lot. The parking lots near the field house were used as a staging area for ambulances and fire trucks that arrived from throughout the region. At 3.13 p.m. Sergeant Ellington advised that there were at least two deaths. Officers encountered several problems, including a piercing fire alarm that had been pulled, as well as very high radio traffic, and static that made it hard to hear radio calls come in. In addition, due to conflicting reports and the multitude of injured victims, at various buildings around campus, officers needed to check multiple sites to rule out the possibility of multiple shooters, and multiple shooting sites. Injured victims began appearing at Neptune Hall and at Dusable Hall. At 3.21 p.m. as personnel arrived, from the DeKalb Fire Department, DeKalb County Sheriff's Office, DeKalb Police Department, and Sycamore Police Department, officers advised that the scene and perimeter of Cole Hall were secure, and that it was safe for emergency personnel to proceed to the shooting site, and to the sites of the injured victims. At 3.34 p.m. after a sweep of Founders Library was conducted and officers determined that Neptune and Dusable were not shooting sites, they declared the area safe. Police officers established a reception area for law enforcement personnel at Wirtz Hall and an investigative command center at Home Student Center. By 4 p.m. CST, school officials announced that there was no further danger. They said that counselors would be made available in all residence halls dead. Six people, all residents of Illinois, were killed by Kazmierzik, Catalina Garcia, Juliana Giant, Rain Mace, and shooter Stephen Kazmierzik were declared dead on the scene at Cole Hall, while Daniel Parmenter was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. To Kishwaukee Hospital at 4 p.m. Gail Duboski was flown to the nearest trauma center, St. Anthony Hospital in Rockford where she was pronounced dead shortly after arrival at 4.14 p.m. Injured 21 people survived the incident with injuries. 17 sustained gunshot wounds, while 3 injured their knees or backs escaping the scene. One injury was undetermined. Of them, 3 remained in Coal Hall, 5 had fled to Neptune Hall or its parking lots, 1 to Dusable Hall, 2 to the Home Student Center Bookstore, two to the Home Student Center's Sandberg Auditorium, three to the Health Services Building, and five returned home to seek treatment. Sixteen of the injured victims were transported to DeKalb's Kishwaukee Community Hospital. One was transferred by helicopter to Rockford St. Anthony Medical Center, three to Downers Grove's Good Samaritan Hospital, and one to Rockford Memorial Hospital. On February 15, Another victim sought treatment at Kishwaukee Hospital, bringing the total of hospitalized injured victims to 17. On February 15, seven of the victims were in critical condition, one in good condition, one in stable, and eight discharged, according to Kishwaukee Community Hospital. Like those killed, all who were injured were from Illinois. Perpetrator Stephen Philip Kazmierzik was born in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. He was a student at the University of Illinois at the time of the shooting, and was a former student at Northern Illinois University. 
personal life. He graduated from Elk Grove High School in 1998, during which he was treated temporarily for mental illness, at the Elk Grove Village Threshold's Mary Hill House Psychiatric Center, for being, unruly, at home, according to his parents Gail, and Robert Kazmierczyk. He was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder as a teenager. He later went on to study sociology, at Northern Illinois University. Though his family moved to Florida in 2004, Kazmierczyk continued his education in Illinois. He enlisted in the United States Army in September 2001, and was discharged before completing basic training in February 2002, for lying on his application about his mental illness. His mother died in Lakeland, Florida in September 2006 from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. At the time of Stephen's death, his father was living in a retirement community in Lakeland. Education Kazmierczyk graduated from Nui in 2006 where he received the Dean's Award in 2006 and was considered a standout, well-regarded student. Campus police describe him as a fairly normal and unstressed person. Faculty, students, and staff revered him, and there was no indication of any trouble. Ganui President John G. Peters said that he had a very good academic record, no record of trouble. Kazmierczyk was vice president of the Nui chapter of the American Correctional Association. He had also written about the U.S. correctional system, specifically prisons. In 2006, Kazmierczyk, along with two other graduate students and under the lead authorship of a sociology professor, co-authored an academic paper entitled, Self-Injury in Correctional Settings, Pathology of Prisons or of Prisoners. It was published in the academic journal Criminology and Public Policy. He was enrolled at Nui in the spring of 2007, where he took two courses in Arabic in a course called Politics of the Middle East. His research paper was on the subject of Hamas and its social service projects. He left to begin graduate work in the School of Social Work at the University of Illinois, where he intended to study mental health issues. He was enrolled part-time at the University of Illinois during the fall of 2007 and worked from September 24 through October 10 at the Rockville Correctional Facility for Women near the Illinois-Indiana border. His reasons for leaving were unclear. He simply did not come back to work according to Doug Garrison of the Indiana Department of Correction. By early 2008, at the time of the shooting, he was again enrolled full-time at the University of Illinois. Possible Motives He died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound after the shooting ended. ABC News reports that his behavior seemed to become more erratic in the weeks leading up to the shooting, and that it is believed he stopped taking medication beforehand. His girlfriend, Jessica Beatty, confirmed that Kazmierczyk was taking Xanax, Ambien, and Prozac, all of which were prescribed to him by a psychiatrist. She said that he stopped taking Prozac about three weeks prior to the February 14 shooting. She also said that, during their two-year courtship, she had never seen him display violent tendencies and she expressed bewilderment over the cause of the rampage. He was anything but a monster, Beatty said. He was probably the nicest most caring person ever. After the shooting, authorities intercepted a number of packages he sent to her, which included such items as a gun holster and ammunition, a textbook on serial killers for her class, the book The Antichrist by Friedrich Nietzsche, and a final note written for her, signed with his given name and family name. The shooting was baffling to those who knew him, as he appeared outgoing and never appeared to have social problems. This has also confused investigators who have not found a suicide note. Some of Kismirzak's former Nui roommates described him as a quiet man who usually stayed to himself. They stated that, while fairly normal, they did not see him spend much time with other students. Kazmierczyk described himself as a sensitive person in his personal statement for the University of Illinois Graduate School. He also felt victimized during his adolescent years. He expressed interest in helping people with mental problems, and wanted to work with people in need of direction. Although initial reports said there were no signs, he was considered troubled. A story published by Esquire stated that he allegedly had a history of mental illness and attempted suicides, was bullied in high school, and had shown an interest in previous school shootings, particularly those that occurred at Columbine High School and Virginia Tech. According 
To a report published by the United States Fire Administration, Kazmierczyk is believed to have studied Virginia Tech perpetrator Sung Hui Cho's actions and used a similar modus operandi. Reaction The university's official website reported the possibility of a gunman on campus at 3.20 p.m. within 20 minutes of the shooting. The website then warned students, there has been a report of a possible gunman on campus. Get to a safe area, and take precautions until given the all clear. Avoid the King Commons and all buildings in that vicinity. By 3.40 p.m., all Nui classes were cancelled for the remainder of the day and the campus was closed. By Nui officials as part of a new security plan devised after the Virginia Tech shootings 10 months earlier. Students were asked to contact their parents as soon as possible. All Nui Husky sporting events, home and away, through Sunday were cancelled. Most students left campus for the weekend. A spokesman for the ATF stated that agents were dispatched to the scene to assist and to help trace the weapons used. The FBI also sent agents to assist. According to police, Stephen Kazmierczyk removed the hard drive from his laptop computer and a computer chip from his cell phone and did not leave a note that could help explain why he chose a geology class on Valentine's Day to open fire. Investigators were expected to spend at least three more weeks until releasing a report on the incident. Vigils and Memorial Services Approximately 2,000 gathered on campus on the evening of Friday, February 15, for a candlelight vigil to commemorate the victims. Among other public figures, Jesse Jackson and Robert W. Pritchard spoke. In the days after the shooting, the Lutheran Campus Ministry held nightly candlelight vigils. All classes and athletic events were cancelled through February 24, 2008. Faculty and staff returned to work on Tuesday, February 19, and for the remainder of that week received special information and training to help students upon their return to classes the following week. On February 21, exactly a week after the shooting happened, Five minutes of silence were observed from 3.06-3.11 p.m. CST, accompanied by the tolling of bells throughout the community, at a special ceremony attended by thousands in memory of the victims which was held at the MLK Commons. Moments of silence were also held elsewhere throughout the DeKalb community. There was a special memorial service held in the Nui Convocation Center on February 24, the day before classes resumed in honor of the victims that initiated a set of activities and services aimed at community recovery. Due to the loss of one week of instructional time in the middle of the semester, an extra week was added in May. Condolences and Tributes United States President George W. Bush, Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich, U.S. Senators Barack Obama and Dick Durbin, and U.S. Congressman Donald Manzillo offered their personal condolences to Nui President John Peters and the university community in wake of the tragedy, as did many local communities and school districts, and a plethora of universities across the United States. The Chicago Blackhawks NHL franchise wore Nui Huskies decals on their helmets during their game on Sunday, February 17, 2008, versus the Colorado Avalanche. A moment of silence was also observed before the national anthem at the game, and the team wore the same decal. During its next two games at the St. Louis Blues and at home against the Minnesota Wild, the Chicago Wolves of the AHL held a Nui night, during which there was a moment of silence and Nui students were given the opportunity to participate during in-game promotions. The Rockford Ice Hogs, also of the AHL, wore their red jerseys on the following Friday and Saturday night during the team's two home games. At the Rockford Metro Center, distributed red and black ribbons, had a 5 feet by 16 feet sign for people to sign, as well as encourage fans to wear red to the game. During spring training, Chicago White Sox manager Ozzie Guillen and general manager Ken Williams sported new caps in tribute to the victims. For their 2008 season, the Chicago Cubs flew a Nui flag over the grandstands in the outfield. Virginia Tech had a tribute, with students wearing shirts saying, Hokies for Huskies. Students wore these shirts during their basketball game against Georgia Tech on February 23, 2008. John Bon Jovi offered his condolences in a Billboard magazine article, 
After his band Bon Jovi was forced to cancel rehearsals slated to begin on February 14, 2008 at the Newey Convocation Center in preparation for the North American leg of the Lost Highway Tour, the Chicago-based jam-slash-prog rock band Umphreys McGee played a benefit show at the Egyptian Theater on April 8, 2008 for the Newey Memorial Fund. The incident was also immortalized as the subject of a David Bowie song called Valentine's Day on the long-awaited comeback album of 2013 The Next Day. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?